Hey guys, how's it going? I'm back here with another video. And today I decided to bring this video where I'm going to be showing you guys really quickly how to navigate throughout an application in React using the React Router DOM library. I've made a video exactly like this in the past. However, um, since then, it's been a very long time. Um, the library completely changed. So that video is completely outdated. And since that video did pretty well, and I saw that a lot of people were searching for this, I decided to make this video where I'm going to go over all the different methods you can use to navigate throughout an application in React. And before we get into the video, if you could leave a like and subscribe, I would massively appreciate it. It will help push my videos to more people and I'll be really grateful if you guys could do that. So um, with that in mind, let's get into the video. So as you can see over here, um, we already have an application set up inside of our computer. Um, the reason for this is because I'm only teaching you guys a specific functionality of the React Router DOM library. So there's no point in showing you again how to set up routes and how to download the library, how to create a React application. All of that is already implied when you are watching this video. Now, if you want to watch a very in-depth tutorial on this, I can link this uh, video that I have up here in the video um, where I just go over everything. But in this video, I'm going to go over only navigation. So as you can see, I have a very simple React Router DOM project. Um, I defined the routes over here. Um, I have three routes, one for the home page, one for the about page and one for the contact page. Each of them exists inside of this pages folder over here. And you can see that they're very simple, right? One of them has um, the home page has a text saying home page and a link to go to the about page. The about page just has about and then a button to go to the contact page. And the contact page just has contact and a button to go to the home page. So it's kind of doing like a circle, but obviously right now nothing is working. To go to the different pages, I just have to um, put their individual URLs, um, unless it's the home page, which there's a link like this. So what I want to show you guys is how can we navigate by using the buttons. The reason why I included the link on the home page is because um, this is the first method of navigation in React Router DOM. You just create a link. You put which route you want to go towards when you click the link. And then it just appears over here and you can click on the link, right? This is the more well known um, type of navigation. But what we really want is um, the navigations that happen after certain events occur inside of your project, right? So let's start out by going to the um, to the about page, right? We have this button over here. And we want to be able to click on this button and go to the contact page. Now there's two methods to navigate um, doing it this way. There's the imperative method and the declarative method. Now both methods work perfectly. However, one is indeed preferred, um, because it follows the, the core principles of react. And that would be the declarative a pattern, the declarative method. Um, I actually use more the imperative method because um, I find it easier to use. However, you can choose whatever you want, depending on the use case, and um, you can use both methods, both methods are cool. I'm just going to show you guys exactly how to uh, implement both of them. So the first one is the declarative method. And with the declarative method, we need to import an actual component from um, React Router DOM. And this component is called the navigate component. Now, this navigate component will be used um, so that whenever we call this component, it will navigate towards a page. So if we were to put this component right over here like this, it will instantly navigate every single time we go to the about page. So how do we determine where we want to navigate? Well, you just put the the two property over here, and just put the URL to where you want to go. So the path, right, and we want to go to the contact page. So I'm going to put contact over here. Now, this is simple. But as I mentioned, it's not the desired behavior that we want. Because every time I go to the about page, like this, it will automatically put me on the contact page. Because whenever this is called, it will automatically navigate. Now, this is a weird way to navigate, you might think that because um, you're actually calling a component to do the navigation, when, when normally you would imagine it, it is a function. But this is the declarative method of doing this, the way you actually conditionally navigate, meaning you navigate after a certain event, um, could be in different ways. For example, I could create over here, a state called um, something like, go to contact. And, and the other one is set, go to contact and make this a state that starts as false, 
But when we click on this button over here, like this, we can just say that we want to um, set the the go to contact like this, go to contact to be equal to true, right? And then right above here, you can put an if statement by saying if go to contact is true, then I want to navigate to the contact page, right? And then remove this one from here. And basically what's happening over here is every single time um, the state becomes true, it will automatically check this and then navigate you to the contact page. But if it's not true, because it only becomes true when you click on the button, then it will normally return whatever is over here, right? So it will return the about component. If we save this and come over here, you can see that this actually works. If I click on this button over here now, it will actually Oh, we're, we're in the contact page, let me go to the about page. Um, if I click on the about page, um, like button, it should actually bring us to the contact page, right? Now we're in the contact page. So it means it's working perfectly. But like I mentioned, it is kind of weird, you have to create an extra state just to do this. Uh, and you have to put this if statement, which returns um, a component, like I mentioned, this is the preferred method to do this. Now, the, like I mentioned, um, you can choose because the reason why this is preferred is because uh, we're using a component, right? And although we're creating a state to make this component run, this is the whole point of react because react um, is created in a way so that you you have states controlling what is rendered in your application, which is exactly what we have over here, we have a state, which when changed, triggers a re render, which then navigates us to the contact page. Now, there's a different method to do this, which is the one we're going to look right now. And it is the imperative method to navigate in react router DOM. Okay, so now I'm in the contact page over here. And let's implement the imperative method. So the imperative method is my preferred method, um, although it is not uh, best practices. Um, however, like I mentioned, you can choose however method you want. Uh, the way you do this is you import from react router DOM like this, and you import a hook called the use navigate. Now, this is very similar to how it used to be in react router DOM where we, we had a hook called the use history hook. But since it updated, now it is the use navigate hook. And what we do is we just create this function called navigate, which is equal to the use navigate hook like this. And now whenever we call this function, and pass in, um, whenever we call it like this, we say navigate and we pass in the path where we want to navigate. So in our case, we want to go to the home page, so it would be an empty slash, it will navigate us to this home page. So we can just go to our button over here, give an on click to it. And just say that uh, when you click on the button, you want to um, navigate towards the home page, you can clearly see it is a lot less writing a lot less work, we don't have to create an extra state, we just call this hook and call this function. And it works right to prove that it works, I'm going to click on the button and we'll go to the home page. As you can see, now we have a cycle, right, we can go to the about page, then go to the contact page, and then go to the home page. So, like I mentioned, um, this still works perfectly. Um, I would actually use this uh, most of the times. But if you're working in an application where you already have a state already created, and or if you just want to be very careful with following react best practices, then feel free to do it this method as well. If you want to check out the code for all of this, it will be in the description, um, together with everything that I, I talked about in this video. And yeah, that's basically it. I really wanted to make this quick video. Um, stay tuned, because Thursday of this week, I'm going to release a full beginner tutorial for Next.js. So that's why I released this video, which is a little shorter this week, because I'm preparing the video for um, Thursday. And yeah, that's basically it. I really hope you guys enjoyed it. If you enjoyed it, leave a like down below and comment what you want to see next. Subscribe because I'm posting twice a week and I'll massively appreciate it. And I see you guys next time.